Good morning, it's just gone quarter past two, and I thought I'd do something that I haven't done for a while and just ramble at the camera while I've got time. Um, I'm going to put it slap bang in the middle of the PlayStation 2 build playlist that I'm doing. Um, because it's tangentially related. It's it's about something that I bought a couple of weeks ago. And um, yeah, I just wanted to show it off and talk about it. But first things first, to give a little brief bit of history, back in 1997, early 98 maybe, um, I was working at a game store. And the, the company now is called Game. But back then it was called Electronics Boutique. Exactly the same as it is in the States, but they had a name change in the UK. So I was working there. And it must have been in the run-up to the big releases of 1998. So in 1998, you had um, obviously Half-Life, uh, Metal Gear, all of that stuff came out. Like It was a massive year for games. So in the run-up to that, there was a trade show in the UK. Um, it's If you had to sort of link it to anything, it would be like E3, but not E3 in 2020 or E3 in 2019, but more like E3, you know, 20 years ago. So at its core, it was a trade show, and it was a lot of guys in suits walking around with briefcases, exchanging numbers, networking, and trying to buy big bulks of the newest, hottest thing uh, for their, you know, regions or their, you know, whatever. And then they would report back to head office and then they would order loads. I mean, that's where we got the, the term AAA was actually an order code. So a AAA game was a, a an order code that you, you know, you had to put through because it would be in high demand. So you wanted to get as much stock of that as possible. Anyway, so back in 1990, yeah, it must have been in the run up to 1998. So probably the 90, I don't know if it was the 97 or the 98 trade show that I went to, but one of those two. Um, was the ECTS, which is like the UK version of E3. And I saw a lot of cool stuff. Problem was that I'm not a guy in a suit, and I didn't have a briefcase, and I didn't have, you know, any region that I, uh, <laughs> that I was uh, in control of. Uh, what I did was lie on the uh, the form because we thought it'd be funny. We went to the pub after work one night and thought it'd be really funny just to fill out the form that came in the trade uh, trade magazine. And we lied and said we were like heads of marketing. Uh, I'm 16 at the time, like clearly not supposed to be there, but they sent through passes, so we went. Um, so we, you know, there was all these again guys in business suits trying to network, trying to get you know shipments and order and stock and stuff like that. And then there's these two, like, 16... Because I went with my friend, there's, like, two clearly 16-year-old boys just walking around having a right laugh. Um, in the middle of all of the big trade, there were companies, uh, especially in the UK, put on the biggest, most impressive booths they could. And those companies tended to be peripheral makers. So... In 19, again, like in the PS1 era, the N64 era, Dreamcast kind of, and PS2 slightly later, was the Wild West for controllers. Like, it really was. You've, you've probably seen, like, the SpongeBob controllers. You've probably seen the Resident Evil Chainsaw controllers. Like, they're wild, but they're by no means the most bizarre things that were coming out. It felt like every week there was a new, absolutely mental controller that was coming out. Um, purely because someone could, not because they should. And this all goes back to uh, Quick Shot in the, or Quick Joy, as they used to be, in the UK, way back in the Atari and Amiga days, knocking out like Bart Simpson, Alien 3, and like Terminator controllers. And it was just a joystick where the controller was like the T800 head or Bart Simpson. They were useless, but they were kind of cool to look at. So it's it's got a pedigree. And um, like I say, in the PS1 days, it was the absolute Wild West. There were no rules. There were no limits. If you could think of something, you know, it chances are it got built. So I'm walking around ECTS, and the biggest boosts were for Joytech, Mad Cats, and I forget the other name. There was, there was another company around about the same time doing the same thing, but I remember those two. The Mad Cats, 
um, had like they had page three girls or like would be page three girls. They had a ball pool. They had like this faux tattoo parlor um, and the Joytech one as well. Really, really, really cool people there having a great time to a load of like 50 year old guys who did not care. Like they couldn't give a damn. They were walking around just trying to, you know, make sure that their region got the most amount of stock. So me and my mate are having a whale of a time. We're meeting all of these girls. We're, you know, mucking around in the ball pool. Right laugh. And they, they to be honest, it was kind of a relief for them because they were, for the most part, bored. Anyway. Um, yeah, so like I said, they had the biggest booze and they had the most amount of money. And the reason they had the biggest booze and the reason they had the most amount of money was because it was insanely profitable. Like making these weird controllers, you would think, who the hell is going to buy that? Everyone bought that. Like you always have that thing of like the Mad Cats, uh, you would have that controller that you always gave to your little brother or like player two. Someone come around to your house and wants to play, I'll have the f official first party one. You can have that abomination that my mum picked up, you know, for a tenner. So there was that. Let's go forward. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, like it's a big jump forward. A couple of weeks ago, I'm searching for the clear plastic um, shell for that DualShock 4 that I made the blood splatter controller. And the way the sort of algorithms work now is that when you search for one thing, every time you go back to that website, it's like, have you seen this? Look at this. You know what I mean? This is kind of like the thing that you look for. And it kept throwing me controllers. It kept throwing me like... Here's a here's an old joystick. Here's an old you know Mad Cat's controller. Here's a racing wheel. Stuff that I'm never gonna buy. But I'm the kind of person that will just click on something because I'm like I double take. I'm like whoa, whoa, what was that? And then I'll go back down and I'll look at it and I'm like okay. And the weirder something is, and the the worse something is, the more likely that I am to buy it. Which leads me to what I bought. I bought something for. It cost five pounds and it came up in a random like algorithm suggestion recommended um, and it's truly horrific and it is from just later than that period where there was like no rules it got to the point where there were no rules and we were running out of ideas which is dangerous because you end up with stuff like this I'm gonna show you possibly the worst controller I've ever seen it's also the worst controller I've ever held, and it's the worst thing I've ever... I don't think I could design something this bad if I tried. Everything about this controller is wrong, right? It's like having a sandwich that's got chocolate spread, broken glass, and malaria in it. Like, those three things should not be together anyway, but also, why would you put them in a sandwich? Look at this. Please tell me you have seen a controller worse than this. Let's start with the aesthetics. First of all, you have a clear, circular, squishy D-pad. It feels terrible, but why is it clear? Why? What is the point of it being clear? Um, we have a logo up the front, which is in squishy rubber. That's also clear, but what's behind it isn't, so why bother? The buttons, again, very, very sticky, very, very squishy also clear why the reason i say why is we have this rather well printed but also completely bizarre piece of clip art uh plastered on the front so it's black around the outside which is painted on the plastic is red but then we have this yellow sort of explosion clip art here uh, we also have three buttons here we have your your analog button your select button and your start button um, not really where you want them because you can accidentally press them while you're pressing these buttons so the layout also not great so this not a button huge these actual buttons very small and also next to your the buttons that you want to press um, I'm gonna uh, <laughs> I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Yes, it's not shaped like a controller. Yet. You have this button here with a padlock on it, and you have this button here with a padlock on it. When you press them, these are spring-mounted, and you can... 
you can put one side out and then you can press here and pull the other side out. So now it's kind of locked in place and you have grips on the outside and it's more of a joypad shape. The thing that I don't get is that this is no more difficult to transport than this. It's still awkward to transport. Why would you bother? What is the point of that? There, it, it defies logic. And then and why aren't they both? You can put one side out. Like you can have one side out and one side in and it locks as well. Like what? It doesn't make it any more comfortable. It's still horrifically uncomfortable to hold. Nothing about this is right, but that is still not the worst part of this joypad. So, so, what could possibly make this any worse? Is it the the clip art explosion on the front? I mean, that's bad. The buttons, also bad. That D-pad is, by the way, horrific. It's not like the Mega Drive, uh, the Mega Drive disc pad. It is an abomination. Um, weirdly, the joysticks are actually really nice. Like, I might pull these joysticks off and put them on something else. They're really good. Textured as well. So, what could make this worse? Well, the way this thing works is that these legs are actually all-encompassing this um, outer shell. I don't know if you can see. There's actually four layers that make this up. So there's the back plate. There's this plate. Now, this plate is this left arm. So if I unlock it... The whole cylinder, I don't know if you can see just where the light is, that whole back cylinder is moving because it's one continuous ring. So the front plate and the back plate screw through these two arms. So it's, for what it is, very sort of like well engineered for something that is useless and looks terrible. But then you'll notice that what's missing up here, well, these are all, these, these shifts like a, a Chinese puzzle box, like these will move. So where would you put the shoulder buttons? Like you can't have a play. This is for the PlayStation Two. You can't have a PlayStation Two with no shoulder buttons. You need R one and L one. I mean, obviously it's not got analog buttons, but it would be nice if it had shoulder buttons. I mean, do I need to say anything? Let me demonstrate. So I'm going to put one side out. And put the other side out. Make sure it's locked. No, it's locked. So I need to I need to put my fingers on there. That's L1. Not even up here. Down here. And then I need to hold this. I can't even press both these trigger buttons down here and the things at the same time. I'm also I'm also holding onto it with my little finger. So I'm having to squeeze with my pinky finger onto the inside of this. What happens if you've got it together? Like what happens if you actually want to play it like this? Well, now you're you're turning into uh, you know what I mean? I'm 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 turning into the pope. You know what I mean? Like up here. I I I like what I I cannot understand. I cannot understand the thought process behind it. But bear in mind going back to um, to my time at ECTS, they had a lot of money. They had enough money to employ all those girls. They had enough money to employ, uh, uh, you know, the ball pool, the big lights, the the music, everything else. They had all that money to sell this. And then you got to think about the process that went into this. So somebody designed this, like somebody sat down and actually designed this. That's not the problem. The problem is that someone else had to look at it and go, yep. And then someone else had to make this. Someone else had to put it together. And then someone else had to look at the final product that came off the prototype line, look at it, give it the once over and go, okay, let's put it into production. Like that had to happen. And I can only assume that some of the people I met at that Joytech booth and that um, Mad Cats booth, like some of those people, probably the same people that check this off, because uh, yeah, there is absolutely 
no way that this would get made in any other time period than then. Because like I say, there were no rules and we have been knocking out such weird stuff for such a long time. Remember, this is PS2, right? So at this point, we had seen all the football controllers. We had seen the SpongeBob controllers. We had seen you know, the Resident Evil chainsaw. We'd seen a million fishing rods. We had seen all the... God, when Euro 96 happened, all that Euro 96 stuff. Like, we had the England memory cards. We had the England controllers. We had... Oh, there was just everything. There was absolutely everything you could think of. And then there's this. Like, uh, think about all the steps that had to happen before you get to something like this. So, obviously, I love it. I've spent a fiver on it. I think it might be possibly the best £5 I've ever spent. It's so bad that I kind of love it. Am I going to use it? Maybe. Could I play through Half-Life on the PS2 with it? I might have tried. And um, no, I don't think I can, but I'd like to give it a go. I'm thinking of doing something with it. I don't really want to open it up because of like the, the, the way that it's built. Um, with it's like concentric rings that sort of like sit on top of each other. I don't really want to take it apart. It all seems to work about as well. As I, the thing is, it doesn't work great, but I think the way it works now is no different to the way it worked when it was like new out of the box. So I don't think I can make it any better by taking it apart. But I mean, that really is a thing of beauty. It really is. Nothing works. The clear buttons. No point. The clip art, no point. The locking wings, no point. The triggers, I mean, wow. What an abhorrent mess. I absolutely love it. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I thought I might throw that in there just as an excuse to uh, ramble on about ECTS 98, 97, 98, and uh, about meeting some really cool people and about buying a really not cool controller but goddamn is that thing amazing okay i thought i might throw this on the end um i'm waiting for that video to render and i thought i'd give a little bit of context for those photos um we filled out the the uh, order form for the security badges in the trade paper and the trade paper was registered to the store so our security badges came through to the store. They were mailed there. And when our manager found out what we did, um, he did two things. First of all, he chewed us out because we had promoted ourselves to regional manager, which was pretty funny. And it said it on the uh, the passes. And secondly, um, he gave us a uh, disposable camera. Like, you remember the old disposable cameras? The ones that when you take a, you go click and then it's and you have to wind it on to the next one. And then what you do, it, you don't know how they've come out, you don't know if they've come out, you just have to take them to boots at the time, and then they would develop them for you, and then you would just get an envelope full of uh, photographs back. It's kind of important. So he gave us one of those and said, while, we, <laughs> while we're going around, um, find all the booze where you know, the big crowds around and just take a picture of it so then he could order it and then it would make him look good. Like, it would, you know, make his store look good if he had, you know, knowledge of all this stuff. Um, so what we did was basically fill up the camera. It The in-camera was entirely us and the, like, marketing girls. That's it. Like, end to end. There was nothing else on there. Didn't tell him. <laughs> and let him walk into Boots and develop it with his own money as well. But we also thought it would be quite funny for him to kind of explain why he had an entire camera roll <laughs> filled with like two young boys and all of these girls. <laughs> but he weren't happy. <laughs> he wasn't happy before we went and he was even more unhappy when we got back. <laughs>